Dear friends, welcome back to my channel. Let's read. Before proceeding, please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. From the timeless collection of Ismat Chukdai, let's read Kallu. Let's begin with the story. Although quite not seven, Kallu did the work of a grown man. He was shaken out of his sleep early in the morning and dressed only in an old tattered shirt in winter with Abba's old woolen cap pulled down over his ears. Looking like a migget dripping at the nose, he promptly set to work. Scared off by the cold water, he was always reluctant to wash his face and just once in a while he would carelessly rub the tips of his fingers over his teeth which remained permanently coated with a thin yellow film. The first thing he did in the morning was to get the stove going. Then he put water on for the tea, set the table for breakfast and made a hundred rounds to the dough and back, carrying butter, bread, milk and then finally the eggs. Flapping his slippers noisily, he travelled to the kitchen innumerable times and after the cook had prepared breakfast, Kallu made more trips to the table lugging hot toast and parathas. To ensure their good health, the children were forcibly fed porridge, milk, eggs, toast and jam while Kallu quietly looked on. When breakfast was over, he sat alone in the kitchen and ate leftover burnt ends of the toast and paratha, hurriedly downing them with some tea. His next task involved taking care of small errands around the house. He polished Maliha Bee's pumps, scouted for Hamida Bee's ribbon, located Akhtar Bhai's socks, recovered Salma Bee's book bag, fetched Mumani Jan's katha from the Almira, and retrieved Abba's cigarette case from beside his pillow. In short, he spun around like a top until everyone had left for either the office or school. Later, he washed Nanni Bee's diaper and then settled down to play with Satya Bee. In between, he made trips to the front door to receive mail from the mailman or to inquire the name of a visitor at the door. Around midday, the cook handed him peas to shell or spinach to rinse. At lunch, he repeatedly dashed to the dining table with hot rotis, giving the baby's cradle a little push every now and then. What more can I say? He came to this household at a very young age, did the work for a bearer and a sweeper and all this for two rupees. A month along with some old ragged cast off. His mother lived in the village and had entrusted him to our care. He would at least have enough to eat, she thought. She herself worked as a cook for the village Zamindar. She visited him sometimes, usually at the Tej festival and brought him molasses and parched wheat of fried corn. She too put him to work. Dear boy, come here and scratch my back. Son, bring me some water. Get some roti from the kitchen, son, and ask the cook for a little dal also. Rub down my back, boy. Rub my shoulders. Massage my head. The truth was, his little hands executed a great foot massage and once he started, you didn't want him to stop. Often, he would have to continue massage the entire afternoon. Sometimes he dozed off and fell on your legs. A kick was generally enough to awaken him. Kalu had no time to play. If for some reason he had a little respite between errands, he would be found slumped with exhaustion, silently staring into space like an idiot. Seeing him sitting like this, looking so foolish, someone or the other would stick a straw in his ear and startled him. He would bashfully turn to task that required his attention. Preparations for Maliha B's wedding were underway. There was a talk of weddings all day long. Who's going to marry whom? How did so and so marry so and so? And who should marry whom? Who are you going to marry Nanni? Mumani would jokingly ask, Appa, lift Nanni, sending everyone into fits of laughter. And who are you going to marry Kalu? Amma asked in a jest one day. Kallu revealed his yellow teeth in a shy grin. When he was pressed for an answer, he lowered his eyes and whispered, Salima B. May you rot in hell, you stupid fool. A curse on your face. 
peeved by the laughter around her, Mumani proceeded to box Kalu's ear. Then one day, while he and Salima were playing, Kalu asked her, Salima B, will you marry me? Yes. Salima nodded vigorously, her little head bobbing up and down. Mumani sitting up in the sunny part of the courtyard, combing her hair was privy to this exchange between Kalu and her daughter. Livid with anger, she removed her sandal from her foot and smacked him one with. A blow landed in the wrong place. Kalu's nose began to bleed and soon blood was streaming down the side of his face. Kalu's mother, who was visiting at the same time, saw the blood and screamed that her son had been murdered. Get out of my house, you hypocrite! Mumani yelled and ordered both mother and son out. Kalu's mother wept and begged forgiveness, but her pleas went unheeded. The years went by swiftly, as with other servants who came after him, Kalu too was forgotten. Maliha was now a mother. Hamida B never married. Half the family had migrated to Pakistan. The other half remained here in India. Nanni, Safiya and Salima having completed their education were now waiting to get married. But husbands were difficult to come by. Our uncle, Chacha Mia, was constantly on the lookout for eligible young men. He moved in official circles and had arranged a match for Maliha, but he too was helpless now. These were bad times. Nice young men were nearly impossible to find. And those who were around demanded that a car and a fare to England should be included in the dowry. Such demands could be taken into consideration only if there was one girl in the family to be wed. But here, there were so many. Also, the loss of land had resulted in lowering of status and income, and there were no parties anymore, no fancy get-togethers. How were young girls to meet eligible young bachelors? Nonetheless, if a rare party did come around, Chacha Mia saw that the girls did attend it. And so, when a dinner was held in honor of Mr. Din, the new deputy collector, preparations in our house began several days in advance. Mr. Din was a bachelor and the eyes of all the mothers of unwed girls in the city were focused on him. We were stunned when he saw him. He was over six feet tall, had a vitish complexion, very attractive features, and teeth which shone like real pearls. During introductions, he suddenly quietened at the mention of Salima's name, and then quickly moved away from our group to chat with the other guest. Chacha Mia approached us with an expression of bafflement on his face just as we were getting ready to leave. Do you know who this Mr. Din is? He asked. The deputy collector, who else? Mumani answered gruffly. No, no. I mean, did you recognize him? My dear, he is our own Kallu. Kallu? Mumani crinkled her nose. Yes, yes, Kallu. Kalimuddin? This is too much. You mean that little maggot who was our houseboy? Yes, the very same, the one who suffered a beating at your hands, Chacha Mia goffed. My God, what's wrong with the government? It seems just about anyone can land a job with it these days. But how did this happen? Why not? He's a Qureshi, that's a good caste, and he even submitted to your beating when the need arose. My mother said in a mocking tone, well, in that case, why don't you give him your own daughter in marriage? Mumani spoke arkly. I wish my daughters were so fortunate, Amma said. I'd be only too happy to have him for a son-in-law. But why would he want to have anything to do with a family at whose hand he suffered such humiliation? Aisha, his mother left him with us so he could become somebody. But you turned him into a servant, Chacha Mia said. And the poor woman worked hard, sewed clothes, washed people's dirty dishes and finally succeeded in raising him to such heights. People are willing to present him their daughters on a silver platter. May they perish who do. I don't need him, said Mumani. One day Chacha Mia arrived at her house in his usual state of nervous agitation. We were at the club, talking and before I knew, Kalimuddin walked out of there with me as I was leaving. 
make some tea, anything. Amma ran towards the kitchen, but Mumani, a grimace firmly sat on her face, didn't budge. The girls became pale. Salima was especially perturbed. We wondered whether Kalim Sahab should be asked to come in or the ladies be sent to the lawn or Chacha Mia be allowed to handle everything by himself. He is here for revenge, Malia said with the mock seriousness and Mumani shivered. Salima's face was drained of colour. I don't care what happens, Amma said. He is here, which means he is a decent person and we should respond with the same sort of generosity. No. I don't want to be humiliated, Momani growled. You are welcome to take your own girls. None of mine is going to stay from here. He is just here to show off his superiority. I won't go either. I am already married, Malia said with a laugh. Finally, it was decided that we would all go and of Momani's daughter, only Mandiha would accompany us. What's he going to think? Such uncivilized people, upset and bewildered. Chacha Mia started grumbling. We arrived in the lawn to find Kalim Sahab, engaged in a lively conversation about the past with the old gardener who smiled sheepishly, somewhat embarrassed, a little uncomfortable. Midu Chacha, remember how you used to holler water at the front door and immediately I used to pull a sheet in front of Dulhanbi? Tell me truthfully, did you ever sneak a look through the sheet? He burst into laughter. While we were having tea, he said, Maliha B, do you remember how you boxed my ears for not brushing my teeth regularly? Maliha blushed. No matter how unpleasant one's childhood has been, one always remembers it like a wonderful dream, he said. All of you probably forgot about me, but I didn't forget you. We talked for a long time afterwards, shared jokes and laughed. His carefree manner put us at ease in no time. Please give my regards to Dulhan B, he said before he left. She is not feeling well, Maliha lied. He laughed. Forgive me, but I have a very sharp memory. I remember that when Dulhan B was angry with someone, she took ill. Well, I have to go. I have a dinner engagement tonight. I'll come again another time. We talked about Kalim Sahib late into the night. What if he proposes? Chacha Mia spoke with some hesitation. He'd better stay away from my girls, Mumani retorted. Why? Amma was irritated. Because I say so. This was all artifice on her part. Only God knew what was really going on in Mumani's heart. Salima became tearful. Everyone had been teasing her. A month passed. We had almost forgotten about Kalim Sahab when suddenly he arrived at her house one day with Chacha Mia. This time, Chacha Mia informed only Maliha and myself of his presence in the lawn. He wants to see his crotchety Dulhan B, Chacha Mia said. And she won't let him come near her. We decided that since Mumani would never agree to a meeting voluntarily, the best course of action would be to just bring him and surprise her. My dear, she's a witch. There will be no place to hide myself if she insults him. Chacha Mia spoke fearfully. Don't worry, Maliha said. She is not a child. I'll go and get her and you bring him in. Our hearts beat uncontrollably. What if Mumani exploded like a bomb? Except for Maliha and me, all the other girls disappeared into the house. Kalim Sah walked into the room to find Mumani engrossed in cleaning her pandan. Her back was turned to him. Maliha, listen girl. Get me the bowl of katha from the cupboard in the kitchen, will you? She called out. He took the bowl of katha from Maliha and handed it to Mumani. She extended her hands toward it and said, And some water too. Just then, she lifted her eyes and found him standing by her side. Adab. He whispered the salutation nervously and kept his eyes glued to the floor. God bless you, she responded in a deadened tone and started spooning out katha from the bowl. Are you well? I am fine with your blessing. Why are you standing? Sit down, she ordered dryly. He sat on the far side of the charpai, on the adwan. Oh no, not there. You will break the adwan, she yelled, and he jumped hastily. 
When Kaleem Sahab sent a message requesting Salima's hand in marriage, she was unrelenting. Come hell or high water, I won't give him Salima, she said. But why? Chacha Mia and others pressed for a reason. Who are you to ask? I have decided. I won't. And that's it. She said obstinately. Kaleem Sahab said he hadn't taken no from life and he wasn't going to take no from the old lady either. Determined to get his way, he boldly stationed himself on a chair next to Mumani's bed one day. All of us gathered around them with the great interest, as if a fight between two wrestlers in a ring was about to commence. I am going to make myself very clear, he spoke firmly. Mumani frowned. You are turning the tables on him? Dulhan B? That's not fair, Chacha Mia interjected. Don't say anything, Chacha Mia. I'll take care of this myself. Kaleem Sahab brushed Chacha Mia aside and turned to Mumani. At least tell me what my crime is, Dulhan B, he complained. Dulhan B? Hmm. As long as you call me Dulhan B, Mumani muttered indignantly. Amma B, he began in a tearful voice. Mumani's eyes also filled with tears. She began scolding us. Is this a circus? Why are you standing around watching like idiots? I know these girls won't be of any help with the wedding arrangement. I'll have to take care of everything myself, as usual. Useless. These girls are good for nothing. And Mumani's cantankerous chastisement fell upon her ears like the sound of the wedding trumpets. Dear friends, this was end of the story. Please stay tuned for another such stories. Also, do not forget to subscribe the channel.